Good day, Cherry Blossom family. Uh, we have, I don't know where Paul is, but okay, there you are. Cherry Blossom family, this is Derek. I'm back with another Friday with friends. And this is a very exciting guest. I know I say that often, but we are very excited to have Paul John Garrett here today. Um, this is a little more personal for me because Paul and I worked together in the past. He has been somewhat of a mentor for me in numerous ways and personally and professionally. Uh, he owns Tablefield Catering and Tablefield Grocery. Uh, and they operate out of Baltimore County. They serve Baltimore, uh, Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Montgomery County, Prince George's County, Howard County. And they're doing a fantastic job of bringing people uh, fresh meats, fresh produce, fresh off the farm. Let me talk about organic, um, organic meats, organically processed uh, uh, fruits and vegetables. They're getting grown, I should say, fruits and vegetables and a host of other pantry items. Some, we'll get into the, what, what he's doing uh, to benefit his own business with his own hands. So, Paul, thank you for being with us today. Um, you know, I, I, I tried to build you up a little bit there in the intro because, uh, you know, uh, we love you here at Cherry Blossom. You are definitely part of the Cherry Blossom family. Um, so it kind of goes a little bit beyond more like Friday with friends. This is like Friday with family. So thank you. Um, thank you for being here today. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. You've been on me for a while to do this. So it's nice I have. to finally I have. make it happen. I'm it's glad nice you made it happen. Thanks for happen. making time for us. I know you're very busy. You get up way early in the morning. You got to meet with farmers, and I know that you know they're they're early risers. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, tell us your story. Tell us about your background and kind of what got you into the food industry. Ooh, boy, that's a that's a tough question. So, I think my earliest um, my earliest recollection with food was. Um, waking up as a younger boy on Sunday mornings and smelling garlic and onions being sauteed in olive oil. I'm the Absolutely. grandson of Italian immigrants and, you know, having a pasta dinner every Sunday was kind of part of the tradition of, of most Italian families uh, when they came to America from uh, the old world. And, you know, my father was a, a steam mechanic, a, a boiler maker, worked on large commercial boilers. And uh, there were six kids in the family. And it was hard to kind of find one-on-one -on -one time with my pops, you know? Yeah. And so when I would get up on Sunday and go to the kitchen, nobody was with them. So, you know, I remember kind of getting up on a little step stool and, and cooking with him. And, you know, I, I, I wrote something that's on my catering website about how, you know, to me, the young mind thinking that food was, was really magical, that you can take just a few things, literally a few things, and combine them um, into this dish that was like, ooh, you know, where the, the sum is much greater than the individual parts. It was just kind of magic to me. Uh, and I always loved that and enjoy that. I, you know, and my dad taught me not so much how to cook, but that I could cook and that I love to cook. Um, and then, you know, later on, uh, my parents unfortunately divorced when I was a young, young boy. Um, and cooking became something that I, I needed to do to, sur you know, to survive, you know, um, it's funny, I was one of the original latchkey kids, you know, I remember mm. being a latchkey yeah. kid when that term, you know, when you heard about it, right? <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, that's, that's me, understand. that's me, that's I'm me. a latchkey yes. kid. It's like right around your neck. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, um, you know, cooking became something that you just had to do. I mean, you know, if I wanted to eat, I needed to cook something for myself, Okay. So uh, that was kind of probably step two of continuing my cooking journal. And then uh, the third one was when I was a senior, really my junior and senior year of high school, I became involved with a family who were much more worldly than my, than my personal experience. You know, they were, uh, the husband had a PhD in chemistry. Uh, the mother was an artist. I actually dated their daughter. Um, and they ate things like curry and pate and things like that. They had apprentices from um, Canada, from um, the Netherlands, from California. And I grew up in a pretty rural place. 
And so this really, my, my, my worldview just really opened up. It's kind of one of those big what if moments in my life. Like, what if I never met this family? Um, and I probably wouldn't be sitting here today if wow. I hadn't met them. So it's a pretty, pretty uh, important part of my life. Anyway, um, I lived with them my senior year of high school because my mother had moved out of my hometown. And it was kind of nice living with a uh, upper middle class family because we would go shopping. It's like, oh, Paulzo, what do you want to make for dinner this week? <laughs> you know? Right. And there wasn't in poor families. No, <laughs> no it doesn't happen it doesn't, in poor no. families, right? So, I mean, you know, we, we had like meatloaf sandwiches the next day when there was <laughs> leftover meatloaf. Wow. So, you know, being able to do things like curries and seafood pastas and just kind of explore uh, culinary trends a little bit. And then naturally at that point, you know, um, you know, I start cooking for ro romantic intent, you know, when cooking for my dates and learning that cooking was powerful mojo. Um, and, you know, I'm a self-trained chef. I, um, I was a history major. I went to school down at St. Mary's College of Maryland. And I had a non-Western focus of learning about the world, mostly the colonial powers, whether it be Spain or England in their colonies. And as part of that in St. Mary's, they always had an anthropological bent to things that almost always led to food. And at least going up to DC, going to an African restaurant, going to a Latin American restaurant. And so I really became enamored with ethnic cuisine, the immigrant experience, because, you know, my family has an immigrant experience. Um, and, you know, it just kind of kept on keeping on. I graduated. I was in graduate school. I became certified to teach first through eighth grade. And at that time, that's when we started our, our, our first version of our catering company. It was called Dionysus Kitchen. And um, I was just kind of doing that. It was almost a hobby business. And the response that people were having to, you know, scratch made homemade food using really great local ingredients and, you know, having some passion behind it was so positive. Um, that my family, my wife and I made the decision, let's pursue uh, the catering company. We did it for about four or five years before my wife was able to leave. And here we are for many years later, you know, golly gee, I mean, I've been, I've been catering longer than I've been doing anything else. And the pandemic uh, took away two thirds of my family's income. And <clears throat> we pretty quickly realized that it wasn't going to be over by Easter, like we were told by our past <laughs> president. Um, and we were prepared to possibly have to take, you know, two years off of catering. So we pivoted to Tablefield Grocery um, to help all of our suppliers, our bakers, our farmers. You know, it wasn't awesome. just, it wasn't just us who, we're going to be struggling with this, but it was our vendors. So we felt it was very important to help protect the local, the local food chain uh, that has been growing wow. and growing and growing. And that like this pandemic, if we didn't do something to really try to firm up that local food chain, that it could be, you know, problematic and a, and a big setback. And so here we are, here we are. You're doing good work. That is awesome. Really? You know? And I I'm sure your purveyors, they really appreciate you keeping them in mind and, and, and knowing and looking at you now, like you're really a partner in their business. Yeah, well, it's, it, it's, it's actually a bit comical that we are buying more vegetables from local farms <laughs> and more baked goods and more cheeses and more just all across the board than I ever did as a caterer. Wow. than I ever did as a caterer. So whereas before, you know, with my local farmers, we might get $600 worth of vegetables uh, twice a month to serve the two large special events that we were going to be working on. Because we, you know, we were, you know, we're a small uh, boutique caterer. We're not like mm -hmm. this 
huge, you know, corporate, large $10 million a year firm. We've never wanted to be that. Um, but, you know, it's funny now, you know, every week we're ordering like, you know, $1,500 worth of, you know, worth of wow. produce. Um, some weeks even even more than that. And then the dairy, I mean, the dairy's just gone off off the hook. So, yeah, I, th I think- and Your our, customer base seems to be really appreciating what you're bringing to the table and the, and the shift that you actually made during the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, we're hearing from a lot of people who, um, you know, they they used to eat, the, or, the, you know, they, they love to know where their food's coming from. They're it's getting all, more important, yeah. You know, they're, they're already getting glass bottled milk. They're already participating in a CSA. They already like to go uh, to a local bakery to buy, you know, a local loaf of bread or get, you know, farm fresh eggs and things like that. Um, but, you know, what we've done is we just kind of brought it all into one place. So it kind of really, you know, it's a way to kind of help our farmer par partners, our local maker partners um, to kind of get their products out to market. But it is awesome. very, very customer focused in terms of, you know, they don't have to say, okay, I'm going to get my cheese over there and I'm going to get my dairy over there and I'm going to get my milk over there and I'm going to get my veggies over here, right? It's, um, it's, you know, it's difficult and we're all, we're all so busy. The modern age just keeps us very busy. So this yeah. is kind of a one and done. You go and set your recurring things and, uh, you know, they can also get CBD products on our site, which we're going to talk about a li little yes, bit later. Yep. You know, in a, in a, in a world where things are, 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 everybody's opting in to have things delivered to the house, like you're, you're a very easy plug-in to that lifestyle, which is great. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I mean, you know, we're, you know, our customer is, you know, looking for convenience, for sure. They're looking, they're very concerned about sustainability. You know, we've been working uh, really, really hard to uh, cut down the, the waste in our system. Um, you know, I'm amazed that whenever my family orders carry out, just the amount of plastic that you get with it. It's just like, oh my God, yeah, my gosh, you know, it's, it's wow. in the food business, it's crazy hard to get rid of plastic. And so, you know, we are working on moving towards plant-based, you know, plastics, things that are compostable in the, in the, in a commercial composting setting, um, you know, packaging our CSA boxes. They're technically not boxes, they're bags because it just, you know, it, re it lowers that carbon footprint and re yeah. removes the waste of everything. So there, there you go. Well, you know, we're going to jump a question or two because we actually have been touching on some of your personal and professional beliefs. Um, and, and, and I think it, it, you're, it's translating here, but tell us like how it translates to your food and how you communicate this message to your customers. Ooh, well, you know, for me, the food has always been, I've never liked, I've, I've never liked the elitism of good food. Do you know what I mean when I say I know that? exactly what you mean, yes. I've, it's hard to explain. You know, good food, food that's like homemade is often so incredibly expensive. Um, and really making it um, inaccessible to, to a wide audience of people from diverse social economic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, and with catering, you know, we've had people that we've catered for who, you know, they've spent $5,000 for an event with us and people that have spent $35,000 with us. And, you know, in my heart, that money means the same to those families. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the hard work of the one family to make $35,000 and the other, you know, more, you know, you know, middle-class family that that $5,000 wedding is, is still a burden to them. You know, we approach all that work the same. It's not like we make the stock for the, the rich folk. You know, so that they get great risotto. 
And then we just use bullion cubes for the other people to do that. No, we're, we, we, we approach it the same way. And we try to guide people in terms of helping them understand how, how the industry works, how things function. You know, it's unfortunate sometimes the people on the higher end of things, you know, like they don't like my educational approach of things because I'm presenting limits to them um, and saying, you know, and it, it's, it's funny because I can, you know, it, it's unfortunate because my goal is, is to try to help people understand where their money's going and, and to help them have the best possible event possible. And um, so, so that's one of the thing that has guided me is the more egalitarianism of catering. Um, and we've carried that notion through to the grocery delivery business. Um, you know, we went through and, you know, unfortunately, a lot of our produce is more expensive than going to a, a giant and just getting non-organic stuff from the West Coast and whatnot. No doubt. Um, South America or whatever. You know. it, it, exactly. It's really hard for the local economies to compete against, um, to compete against globalization, essentially. And so what was very important for us as a company was that we made a commitment from day one, day one, that we were going to, um, we were going to make a donation to the Maryland Food Bank that fed, the original concept was that would fit, fit three people, feed three people, okay? That's awesome. And then, and that was going well and, you know, da, 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 da. And then we developed this, this strategy of, hey, hey, let's wait until the Maryland Food Bank has a matching grant. And so they know if they like are like, oh, we have $1,000 left of this matching grant. Let's reach out to Pauly D at Tablefield Grocery and say, hey, can you make a donation now? And so when we do that donation, that three people, wouldn't you know it, that turns into six people. That that's awesome. That's awesome. With that. Yes. So, you know, we say that for every <laughs> delivery that we make, uh, we feed six people in need through this smart, more uh, responsive giving partnership with the food bank. And uh, to date, the last time I looked, we fed 35,000 people. Wow. 30, oh, my people. gosh. That's awesome, man. That's what I'm talking about. See, this is where this is why we have people like you on the show. The, you need to be spotlighted. You know what I mean? This effort should not, should not be held in silence. <laughs> That's what I'm well, saying. This is good. Thank you. Well, you've managed to infuse your culinary talents and uh, your present business. Well, from Tablefield Catering into Tablefield Grocery uh, by offering some handmade food and pantry items to your delivery customers. Tell us about some of those items. Shoo. Well, you know, we, we started, you know, we, we started, that was a little less altruistic, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the profit margins on grocery are like, you know, I'm used to profit margins like that. And <laughs> with grocery delivery, it went like, oh my gosh, it was so painful. So I'm like, man, I've got to, I've got to start cooking again. You know, I can't yeah. just deal in raw ingredients again. So it started with chicken pot pie. You know, it was winter time and we're like, you know, hey, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? How can we make it? And, and free some things. So we developed a line of, uh, of pot pies. We have a chicken pot pie with currently the pot pie has uh, hedgehog mushrooms in it, awesome. a forage mushroom. Uh, we have a Creole pot pie, Cajun pot pie with, um, you know, Carizo sausage and uh, chicken and uh, crawfish meat. And that's just okay. kind of a little bit more spicy. And then we have a beef Wellington pot pie that has, uh, you know, local beef along with uh, about four different types of wild mushrooms, a lot of which actually I forage myself for. So it's, um, you know, they're great products. It's, they're aimed at, you know, ease for families. Uh, we do, we have a nice line of soups. We have a nice line of, 
uh, kits that we kind of help people by taking components in the site and -hmm. just putting these things together and saying, you will need this and this, here's the recipe just to kind of help, help them. Yeah. And we're doing it in a way that there's not a lot of extra packaging that's involved, right? It's like, you you get the risotto, you get the thing of beef stock, you get the thing of dried uh, wild mushrooms, you get the little thing of uh, sofrito, sauteed onions, carrots, and celery. Awesome. And yeah. It allows you to do that. I that. Yeah. And then, yeah, we've made that before, haven't we? Yeah. And then all, <laughs> all of that, um, you know, the plastic of the things, it's not plastic, it's plant-based plastic. So it really kind of reduces the carbon footprint and the kits are really affordable. Again, you know, a lot of these meal kit services, you see them and they are averaging about like 13 bucks an entree for it. And for us, for me, you know, for the kind of everyday eating, that's a, that's a little bit expensive, right? For a family that's struggling to get yes. by during a pandemic. So for us, we wanted to do it where, you know, we're landing in around, I think, closer to eight or nine dollars per person for some of wow. our, our meal kits. And and you have left you have leftover ingredients, right? So there's that value added. It's less expensive and you have less, you know, you, you know, you learn a new skill in the case of the risotto to make the risotto. Uh, and then you have leftover arborea rice so that you can just now wing it and kind of do your own stuff. So now it comes down to almost like, you know, if you get a couple of meals out of that, it's like $6 almost, maybe a meal, or $5 a meal, you know? Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah. we're really trying to help people, um, you know, do things, you know, to, we suggest to people that when they have their vegetables, again, you know, they're paying, um, you know, $38 for anywhere from a nine pound to a 13 pound box bag of, of vegetables. Okay. Wow. And that's right. That's a fair amount of money. Yeah. So like, you know, we encourage people and try to educate people to do things like to save the vegetable trimmings. Like don't, don't throw those vegetable trimmings away. You know, when you get the whole, a whole chicken and roast a whole chicken, then you take your vegetable trimmings and your 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 chicken carcass. You put it together. You're going to get a whole other meal out of that, right? That's right. That's you know, right. And have stock that's lower in salt, much more healthier for you. So you know, we're trying our best. It's it's you know our struggle has been that we're learning that um, you know I've used to been I've been so used to just being a cook and focusing on being a great cook that now with this new model, you, we are almost as much of, you know, just a logistics company as no well doubt. as a, a media company of communicating these things and no creating doubt. content like you're doing right now. It's funny. I know, so, right? So, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> We're all learning new skills, aren't we? <laughs> you know, so, uh, and it, it's something that, that I really struggle with to find time to do that. And, um, you know, contrary to popular belief, you know, I, I don't like to hear myself talk all the time. So, <laughs> you know, it just feels really silly to kind of do uh, the cooking things and stuff like that. But we are thinking about this summer, uh, we set up a, an outdoor kitchen here. I, I harness my inner Italian and have an outdoor kitchen with a little pop-up tent. It's, it's much more, it, it's less elitist than it sounds, trust me. <laughs> uh, but, but, but we're thinking about that we're going to do that again and really do more with like you know grilling and smoking things and and, and helping people you know and a lot of the um the the prepared food to get back to the prepared food we're going to move away from those bakeable dishes over the summertime because we don't want people to turn on their ovens in the summertime you know consumes a lot more energy it it it, you know it heats their house they have to their ac work harder so we want people to kind of eat lighter get outside more you know get their grill outside yeah yeah no doubt uh so out of all the types of products that you source and sell which ones do you get most excited about I mean, I have to say that the vegetables are very, very exciting, you know, when you do the vegetables. I mean, this whole journey that we started with, it started with the vegetables. It started with the vegetables. 
Um, and sometimes, you know, we're we're kind of in the the tail end of the dark ages of the growing season, right? The winter right. time is is a tough, tough, tough. Did I mention it's tough, Derek? <laughs> It's a tough time to eat locally because, yes. you know, there, there's only so many, um, there's only so many times that you're like excited about getting a black Spanish radish or a dachyon <laughs> or a rutabaga <laughs> or a parsnip or carrots or beets or, you know, so you kind of get into this root vegetable uh, overload, you know, mm -hmm. and so we, yeah, we, know. We, we prepared for that and we try to put in, you know, a lot of um, Asian ingredients, specifically Japanese ingredients um, who are, you know, a lot of their soups and things that they make of center, you know, traditional things, you know, traditional country, you know, uh, Japanese country cooking will focus around things like radish, dakyan, mm -hmm. turnip turnip greens, you know, stuff like that. And so, you know, because of that, we added miso and, you know, uh, mirin and a good quality soy sauce. And, and we added ginger to the site, uh, organic ginger, but it's obviously not local. But, you know, sometimes you get the, these vegetables when it's the height of the season and you're like, oh, ooh, you know, and they're just so beautiful. The green oh have this glimmering sheen to them. Um, and, you know, and, and it's exciting to do things and it's really exciting to expose families to things that they, that they've never had before. You know, we hear things like when, when I started this, we never knew what kohlrabi was. <laughs> what? No, you know, what, what's kohlrabi? And now when it's one of our favorite vegetables and we love it and we love it or Jerusalem artichoke, uh, you know, or some of these things that people just had zero experience with. So, you know, that's very exciting for me to kind of expose not only the adults, but more specifically, you know, the, the kids, the young children that are in these households eating this food that, you know, are going to have just so much broader of a world view about what vegetables are. You so, don't realize just how important that is. Yeah. That is so important. It, it, like us, we, we are, we were the processed food generation, you know, we yeah. really were, I mean, for better or for worse, you know, it, it worked yeah. out that way. And, and I think we come out on the other side, a lot of us are still stuck there, but a lot of us come out on the other side and we've learned a lot. We've learned from those mistakes that, you know, that, that we were eh, made or introduced to when we were younger. You know, I still like a can of beefaroni every now and then, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you, you learn there's so many other things out there that are like exciting to the palate you know, that don't need to be like yeah. heavily, you know, salted or, 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 or filled with artificial sweeteners or what have you to be palatable. You know, yeah. they're just great on their own. You yeah. know, and it is crazy good to see people like when 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 you see that happen and that, that magic happens when they taste something that they've never had before. I'm like, oh my god! Like I didn't think I'd like it, but I like. It. You know, it's really powerful. Yeah, yeah. And it the is. other the the other thing that we've done regarding that is, you know, we have two uh, online social media platforms. Um, you know, there's the Table Field Grocery platform which is just kind of our page that we, you know, put out like new products and things like that, you know, reminding people of our social mission, our environmental mission, you know, thing, things like that. But then we have the Facebook group that's called tablefieldgrocery.com. And that group allows the new customer where they're like, what, what, what is this? What, what, what do I do with this? And it allows them a vehicle to go into that online group, which is about, you know, it's not that big. It's about a thousand people and it's not real busy and active. So it's not like it fills up your, your you know, you get notifications all the time from it, which right. to me is good. But, you know, it allows me to kind of monitor someone says, oh, what do you do with the black radish? And it allows me the opportunity to go in and respond, maybe post a recipe. But 
in all likelihood, Derek, the other users and our other customers jump in and they're like, ooh, this is what I did with it. And right. so during this time of kind of more social isolation, like that was important to us to try to build community and to build, you know, a way for people to kind of communicate and have shared experiences, albeit virtually uh, meaningful nevertheless. No, it is mean. And people still people love talking about food. Food is a great vehicle to build a community around, honestly. Yes. Well, you sell CBD products through Tablefield Grocery. Uh, so you clearly understand the power of hemp and the benefits associated with the plant. Um, this philosophy goes beyond business for you. Can you tell us why uh, selling hemp is so important for you personally? Ooh, well, you know, for, for us, our site is all about um, wellness and it's about a healthy lifestyle, about, you know, eating homemade food that's prepared, you know, without just dumping lots of butter and everything. And so when we were looking at um, other products that we wanted to put on there, we did want to put on something that would address um, some health concerns that people had, particularly um, issues like anxiety mm -hmm. and issues like pain relief. Um, very big today. It's very big today, right? And so, you know, in, in, in my personal experience in the past uh, 20 years, you know, I've had the misfortune of having many friends who have had children that suffered from anxiety and that they have gotten involved with hardcore drugs um, and have, have overdose from heroin overdose. Wow. Um, and so, you know, it was- like young, young children or like adult children? Yeah, normally, a, 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 you know, young adult children, you know, I mean, we're, we're seeing it, uh, you know, I mean, again, in my experience, both between people that are like professional acquaintances of mine and neighbors of mine, uh, normally it's kind of adult children in their in their 20s is what we're seeing and sometimes i've seen it happen where um lower back pain um i i know a situation where there was a gentleman who was actually in the food business and we all know that that those you know being on your feet the repetitive motions you know standing chopping something for hours be lifting and oh my gosh you know yeah. it's brutal it's brutal on the body um, and, and, and this person started then with, you know, somebody suggested, oh, you know, an opioid, you know, I, I guess Oxycontin or whatever started with that. When that ran its course, it went into heroin. Um, so, you know, to me, you know, it's like, it's very important to kind of, um, to, to, to add credibility to, alternative medicines, things like, you know, chiropractic health, um, you know, meditation, mindfulness, and CBDs, you know, I think is part of that toolbox, in addition to exercise and, you know, you know, positive thinking. And there's, you know, there's, again, it's not just, you know, CBD is the, is the answer to, to all the ailments right. that's plaguing everybody. But I do think that it is a, um, a, a tool in the toolbox for people to kind of steer clear of self-medication with um, alcohol, <laughs> you know, with cocaine, with, you know, you know, really hardcore, you know, drugs. And, you know, you know, I'm proud as a family that my wife, Rebecca, ran for county council. Gosh, when was that, Derek? That was like 11 years ago. 2011, 2012. Yeah, 2010. wow. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking <clears throat> back then, long before the, the, the opioid crisis, you know, we were finding syringes on the side of our street, walking our kids to the elementary school, you know, and I live in a, in a I mean, I'm blessed. I live in a fantastic community. I live in a, the historic old section of Catonsville in Baltimore County. And it's a fantastic community. But trust me, we were affected by it. And, um, you know, we knew that we wanted to get involved in that fight and talk about it and bring attention to the problems of hardcore drugs. 
And it's, it's, it's funny because a lot of people now come back to us, you know, say, you know, boy, back in 2010, we thought the Don Guerra campaign was being really uh, reactionary and <laughs> you know, that you were, you were just beating a dead horse and that there was no hardcore drug problem. But boy, boy, did history prove us right. And, uh, and it's really important for us to kind of promote alternative things. And I think CBD, you know, oils and the gummies and things like that are great tools for people suffering again, Thank you. chronic pain, Thank you. things like that. And then on another matter, um, it was very important to me when we were looking for a vendor, you know, um, you know, I, I don't believe I know that the war on drugs has adversely affected black, black and brown communities for decades. Yeah, for decades. Um, and it was important to me when we, when CBDs were legalized and we were allowed to sell them and I decided that I wanted to sell them, that I found a minority business that I wanted to get my product from. And I think Cherry Blossom CBD is really a blessing to everybody that holds that value of social justice and wanting to kind of help to undo those wrongs that have been perpetrated for decades and in some respects, right, are still being perpetrated. But, you know, I'm just so grateful to you that you have allowed us uh, a great product. And I know that you're doing great work in the community and are community minded like I am. So I am. Th thank I've you. been inspired by you, actually. You know? Yeah. Well, we're well you know, I us. think we we're share a similar philosophy, better. you know, and that we want um we want our, our customers to to have good products. And then and like you know, like you said, it doesn't have to be pretentious. I think that we have luxury products, but we don't really promote it that way. I think we have really high quality lifestyle products, like you know the the gummies that are fresh fruit and vegetable juices, organic fruit and vegetable juices. That goes right along the lines with your philosophy. So, you know, it's important because you want, my God, the worst thing that could ever happen to you as a business owner, someone call you and be like, oh my God, I got sick or something happened off of your product. And then yeah. like, you know, well, I bought it for some guy. Like I didn't know, you know what I mean? Like sure. that's, that's, it, it's, it's crazy, but, and, and that happens. But to me, like, that would be like, oh, my goodness. Like, I, I sold you something that got you, you know, no, I, I, yeah. my Congress could not handle that. So like, we just want to make sure that people, A, understand, you know, what these products are, what they're taking. And, you know, you can find things that are not just designed for you just to buy them and not understand them, but you just buy them, understand them, and also that they'd be effective for you, you know? So it, it is a belief system. We thank you. Honestly, you know, because our us working together for so long, like you taught me so much, honestly, about uh, <laughs> you know the importance of the things that you mentioned in this program, like you know, working with farmers, working and, and keeping those you know those lines open for farmers to 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 build their bridges into our communities, get into our kitchens. You know, it, it, there was a time where you probably when you were a kid, you remember that farmers used to come around your neighborhood. And sort of, you know, in the back of the truck, they deliver fruit, vegetables, what have you, the milkman. And like through big, you know, industrial farming, that's kind of gone away. Like it's been, they've been eliminated almost or like pushed into the background. And you, you, what you're doing right now has really, really been a great vehicle to sort of bring that back and sort of like bring the importance back of people eating locally, having being connected to the food and connected to those farms around your community. I think you're doing fantastic work. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Honestly. I think we're going to let you go, man. We're, uh, we're going to get you off the hook today, but you, this, you, we can't let you off the hook without the shameless plug. So I hope you got some products or something you want to tell these people like, Hey, let's get them to your site. Let's get them spending some money with you. You know, that's what this is all about. Man. We want to shine a light on you today. And, 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 and so you tell these people what you want to hear. Well, I, I love all of our products and I want people to try, try our products. So I think the biggest thing um, that I would like to share with everybody is a promo code that, you know, I need everybody to grab a paper and pencil and get ready to write it down. That's right. So I'm it's going to save you 20% on your first order, including CBDs. Okay. So if you want to try some CBDs and you want to use this on your CBD order, by all means, please do that. 
uh, but it's going to give you free delivery and 20% off on your first order. Um, and it's all uppercase, this promo code, healthy you. Healthy you. Healthy you. Healthy, Where do they apply this promo code? Healthy you. So when you are, um, you know, you to sign up for the, the platform, you just kind of log in. The first thing that you do is it'll ask you for your address. This so is the Table Field Catering website. Tablefieldcatering.com. Okay. okay. And if you see hit like sign up, the first thing it's going to say is what's your address? Are we delivering to you? Okay. Okay. So that's going to be the first thing that you want to do is kind of do that. And then it's going to prompt you to kind of what's your delivery address, what's your billing address, um, you know, what's your credit card information, um, and just all of the, the kind of nuts and bolts. And then you start shopping. Then you start shopping. And, you know, it's nice to kind of go through and you can add items on a recurring basis. So like, let's say, Derek, you, you, you say, I want to start eating more vegetables. Like I want as a, as, as a, as a, I mean, cause that's the best thing for us. It's right. the best thing for the planet, environmentally, carbon footprint, you know, plant-based eating is, is very, very important. Um, and you say, I just want to commit to getting like a large produce box every week for your family a small one might be better because it's just you and your wife i believe right now at home or is, yeah yeah we you know we all got extended family here well yeah so then <laughs> maybe a large box right right you go ahead and get a large box and you you set it and you say uh, i'm going to get an, a delivery every other week you would say i want to get the produce box uh one produce box every other week starting this this week Okay. And then I, I see you sipping on something that could be coffee. It could be tea. That's okay. Tea today. So, okay. So like we have great local organic teas wow. for old care, tranquility and say, oh, let's go ahead and add a, a tranquility for, for once a month. Okay. And, oh, I want to, you know, I, I, I really do have some lower back pain or some social anxiety or because of, or anxiety generally because of the pandemic. Let's go ahead and get the CBD gummies and put that on a recurring order. I use eggs, let's do that. So then you, then you do that. Um, you can cancel it at any time, right? You, it's not like this is a contract that when you say you wanna get something that you're, that you're stuck with it. Um, and, you know, then what we suggest is to take note of your cutoff time. Mm -hmm. And then you go ahead and you set, a, 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 I mean, the, our most, you know, happy customers program a reminder on their phone to, hey, sit down and do some shopping today. There you go. Uh, so then that is kind of like the treats. Like you might say, oh, man, some friends are coming over. Let's go ahead and add some Korean uh, you know, sausages, you know, to my order. And I'm going to go ahead and get some sushi rice and some Goku Chang and some, some rice vinegar. And I'm going to go ahead and do like, you know, a kind of, you know, roasted vegetable, like, um, what do they call bibimbap, you know, like a, 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 rice, a rice bowl with something like that. So, or in summertime, I want to do an udon bowl, you know, so th then there are those things or all the seafood of the week sounded nice this week. So, you know, it's really nice to kind of go back to the site to then kind of, you know, do those uh, weekly just add ons or, oh my gosh, I, I, I really need to try that pot pie this week. <laughs> or, oh, I really want to try some bread this week or, oh, you know, uh, but, you know, I think, you know, Whenever people come to us, it's important that they understand that they're making good choices for themselves, for their family's health and well-being, uh, but they really are impacting a much wider community through the giving to the Maryland Food Bank, through keeping the money in our local economies, uh, through improving the Chesapeake Bay's watershed, through organic farming you know, practices, and just the health benefits of eating organically and the environmental hazards personally for, you know, uh, herbicides and pesticide res residuals on food. 
Uh, but more than that, it's about supporting women-owned businesses, uh, LGBT-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses, that we really go out of our way um, enthusiastically to find these businesses because it is hard to start a business. It is hard yes. to be a small business owner competing against large corporate entities. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we like, to, we hope that our customers like that. So remember it's healthy you, uh, for in the promo code, you just, you you see it. There's a little All area caps. where you, you just add in, you know, promo code. It's at every order. Um, and just check us out and my numbers on the site. And so if you have any questions, just give me a holler and we can walk you through it. We provide really good customer service, and uh, I thank you for this platform, Gary. Dude, thank you. I mean, Paul, you're doing great work. You're helping the, the community. You're helping people get healthier. You're helping farmers. You know, you're 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 bringing people together, and you're doing really good work. So, thank you so much. Keep going with your mission and keep inspiring other people. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Thank you, Derek. Right. Peace be with you, brother. Peace. We have a great weekend, brother. Ciao, babe. Bye.